What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. I'm your host, O, and today we got a very special episode for MLK Day. And who we have with us, with us is a award-winning curator, writer, educator, Dr. Lee, let me know if I'm missing anything. You've been very gracious, thank you. <laughs> so we have Dr. Kalinda Lee from uh, the Center of Civil and Human Rights. So welcome, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm excited that you're interested and that your audience is interested in the work that we're doing. For sure, absolutely. Cool, so let's get into it. Talk, talk to us about you know, the importance of the Center in Atlanta and its uh, significance in the country. Yeah, so the National Center for Civil and Human Rights is a comparatively new organization. We've been around for less than 10 years, but it's the fruition of a dream that's been held for uh, close to 20 years, really, to create a place where we not only share the stories, right, share the history of civil and human rights struggles in this country and internationally, um, but also really help to give people inspiration and tools to understand the ways that they can make a difference with their own lives as well. So it's not just about looking back. It's also about really looking back in a way that helps you create a better future. Sure. You always got to look at your past to help develop and learn from it as you move forward in the future. So that makes perfect sense. Indeed. You know, it's so funny. People always say, you know, if you don't know your past, you're doomed to repeat it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a pragmatist. I'm a little bit more of a realist maybe than thinking that just because you know it, you'll do something with it, right? We know that people learn things about the past and repeat the same mistakes again and again. So there has to be something that's about building empathy mm -hmm. with other people, really understanding and caring why it's important to make a difference. And also really, I think seeing examples of what other people have done and understanding that you actually have what it takes For sure. to be that leader, to be that change maker. These people weren't just, you know, kind of angelic or miraculous. They're just folks like mm -hmm. you and me who made a decision that they were going to do something to make the world a different kind of place. Yeah. And it never happens overnight. You just, you know, keep tapping at it and hitting it and then eventually over time you get to, you know, the goal you're looking for. Indeed, there's that phrase, aluta continua, the struggle continues. Mm -hmm. It always continues. But I think that um, I'm a mom. So, you know, as an historian, um, I, I pay really close attention to what my kids are paying attention to. Yeah. And one of the things I realize is that sometimes, especially when it has to do with African-American history, it can be so steeped in pain and struggle that they're just like, look, I need a break. I wanna look away from this. And so I think it's really also important to pay attention to those spaces that are about inspiration yeah. and those spaces that give us hope and those spaces that, you know, don't, don't bring you down. You come into the center and you leave feeling inspired. Right. You come to our website and you leave hopefully feeling excited mm -hmm. and ready to do something now. Yeah, because, you know, the history in itself is just, you know, it gets exhausting. So being able to go to the center and just see the inspiration and like the growth and the work people have done to, you know, help elevate us and put us in a better position. You, know, you can't, you cannot leave, you know, inspired. So cool. So Monday is special day, MLK day. So talk to us about the importance of MLK and the work he has done. Well, for goodness sake, um, of course, you know, Martin Luther King um, is one of the few figures that we do um, as, a, as a nation, and even I think internationally, really explore quite a lot in our curricula, um, in schools, um, in the kind of public commons. Um, but I think that there's a version of Martin Luther King that people see that isn't the fullness Mm -hmm. of who he was. So, you know, as I get older, I appreciate, first of all, that he did everything that he did before he died at 39. He was really quite a young man mm -hmm. and he had the energy of a young man, you know? So he was constantly growing and, um, and adjusting his frameworks. So 
Certainly he was a theologian. We know about that. He believed in, in God and the power of love, regardless of religion or not, to transform the world. But he also um, was very involved in this idea that we are a beloved community, that we are all interconnected, that, you know, we're going to either, you know, as they like to say, sink together or swim together. Mm -hmm. And so a huge amount of the work that he did was about pulling people together across their differences um, and really standing in solidarity um, with folks whose struggles might have been different than his own. I mean, remember that uh, when he when he ultimately was assassinated in Memphis, he was there to support the sanitation workers in their strike. And so for better wages and better working conditions. So across um, all forms of um, identity and, and levels of struggle, different issues that contribute to inequity, uh, Martin Luther King is really uh, iconic for us in those ways. And also, um, he was a person who apparently liked to laugh and party a little bit. And, you know, and I think that that understanding, making those connections also helps us to build empathy and a sense of power. Yeah. So all of those things, I think, go together for us. Of course, in Atlanta, he is a native son. And so there is a very special um, relationship with him here because of that. And it's yeah. his final resting place. So you can visit. Um, his gravesite um, here in Atlanta. But I think that nationally and globally, um, it, is, it is reasonable and good yeah. that he also occupies an iconic stature. But I also want always for people to remember that, you know, as the lesson of his life, his birthday, right? We talk about it as a day of service. It's mm -hmm. a day on, not a day off. Right. What does that look like? What does it look like to make your community a better place? What does it look like to become a part of the beloved community in whatever ways um, that feels meaningful and relevant in 2021 mm -hmm. for you? Um, for people who are going to be in Atlanta, we're inviting them out to the center where we will have an appropriately socially distant yeah. and responsible um, celebration. There will be the activities for children. There will be um, uh, concert performances at, at regular mm -hmm. intervals. Um, and we are really careful in our institution about making sure that people are temperature scanned and um, that we don't let in too many people and all that good stuff. So we'll have a wonderful day on Monday for folks in Atlanta. If you're not in Atlanta, you can still engage with our activities. For example, we're going to be um, launching an exhibition that looks at Dr. King's work and life and the solidarity with other movements, specifically in this instance, the LGBTQ movement, women's rights movement and labor rights movements online. So we're launching an exhibition mm -hmm. that's called We Share the Dream this evening. Um, so we're launching an exhibition called We Share the Dream. Uh, it's um, Friday evening and you can go to the um, website for our institution and find it there. And it'll be up through April. So you'll have a lot of time to explore and we'll be having new things from January to April online that look at that legacy and celebrate that. So you'll be able to explore that via our website, via Instagram, just keep looking for us. Yeah, and it's a beautiful center as well. Like I was there last week on uh, Saturday and you know, like you mentioned, the protocols are in place for people to really enjoy it and you know, educate themselves and the space is amazing. So I encourage people to go there, I haven't been there myself, so. We're really excited that we were able to reopen because of course, like most institutions, we closed in March um, out of you know vigilance in, in, in trying to help halt the spread of um, the pandemic. But we are open again. I would encourage anybody who wants to visit to go to our website, which is www.civilandhumanrights.org to check our hours because we have limited our hours some in order to um, accommodate fewer visitors and make sure everybody's safe. Cool. And what's your POV on the work he's done and how it like affects society to this day, you know, and how it uh, 
reverberates around the country or even the world rather. Yeah. Um, Dr. King's work was about so much more than oration. Mm -hmm. It's about so much more than giving speeches. It was about so much more than just marching. He was very focused on, first of all, making sure that calls for change were accompanied with actual policy change. Yeah. So when we talk about civil rights, we're actually talking about those things that are codified in law, right? Mm -hmm. So changing the law in ways that are more just, right? That means that while we might not have legalized segregation anymore, we still have all kinds of laws that are unjust or unjustly applied. And that work continues to lean in on that, right? His work was also, as I mentioned before, about being in solidarity with other people who are struggling, yeah. all right? You can't achieve equity and justice if one group's concerns are addressed, but other folks are still left in the muck, right? Or those folks just become those who oppress others. So this work around solidarity, around building together continues to be incredibly important. And we see people who are stepping into those spaces and saying, you know, as a woman, for example, I still have concerns that are linked to, as a woman who is an office worker, mm -hmm. I still have concerns that are linked to the concerns of people who work in factories yeah. and who need to have fair labor practices so that their lives can proceed with the basic human rights that they all deserve, right? Even though that's not specifically my concern. Absolutely. And we also are what we like to call the fancy term, I guess, intersectional, right? We're all kinds of things. Yep. So I'm a woman, I'm African-American person, I'm a Southerner, I'm all of these things. And my various concerns are intertwined. And we are developing all the time new language and new ways of focusing to address those concerns. Um, I think the other thing that he did really well that a lot of people might not know about him is that he knew how to he knew how to talk to people mm -hmm. in a way that was, yeah, mm -hmm. but not just charismatic. He was certainly charismatic, but not just charismatic, but he knew how to talk to people in a way that really um, demonstrated that he was listening to them as much as he was talking. And I think that that is something that anybody of any age, of any educational level, of any background yeah. can really take a lesson from, right? When we hear each other and understand why we are in pain or what it is that we need, um, first of all, people feel better because they feel hurt at all. And mm -hmm. second of all, we can actually address ourselves to those concerns. So um, sometimes we make, up a, we make up a lot of stories about one another. Mm -hmm. And he was really incredible at being able to look past really kind of unbelievable, unbelievable, kind of unfathomable ugliness <laughs> and hear people mm -hmm. um, and, and be empathetic to what their human concerns were and work shoulder to shoulder to try to address them. And I feel like listening, is, especially even today, is very important because you have people who just listen, but you have people who are actively listening and truly understanding what people are saying. So that's why, to me at least, I feel like he's just been such a great speaker and leader because he just understands and listens to people's like plights and concerns. I think that you're absolutely right about that. And I think that um, it's really important that we understand that these level, these, these lessons rather, these lessons mm -hmm. can be imparted at a variety of levels. So one of the things, even though we look at really what some people would say is hard history one of the things that we're really engaged with is creating um, opportunities to make these hard history lessons and the inspiration that's attached to that available for even quite young children. Yeah. So as we celebrate the King holiday, for example, there will be a scavenger hunt in collaboration with the Children's Museum. So that even quite young children can begin to learn these lessons at their level, right? You can't really, um, 
not engage around these questions and then expect to show up in somebody's life when they're 14 or 15 or 16 or say to somebody who's 21, what's wrong with you? Why don't you know about this? And why don't you care about this? That's not fair. You know, we have to do the work within our communities, right? And we consider ourselves a community resource at the National Center for Civil and Human Rights in sharing those lessons at the very youngest ages so that people can kind of grow with those lessons and add to them as building blocks as For they sure. become adults. Yeah, education is key, especially you teach the, the youth as they're growing up, the, the significance of people like Dr. King or even yourself. And from there, they have that information to share as they grow up and always on their mind, so. And then lastly, last question for you is, you know, what can we do today, you know, especially in 2021 crazy times, to continue the work of Dr. King? Well, I think I'll pick up first where you started or where you left off and say um, education. Yeah. Um, that was a slip of the tongue, but maybe not so unintentional because I think education is the beginning of mm -hmm. everything, right? You have to know better to do better. Yeah. Um, so understanding not only what happened, but again, and not only, you know, who was um, important or special, but also learning really in very specific ways. What were the tools in their toolkit? Mm -hmm. How did they do what they did? Um, what lessons can we take from that and employ in our own lives? We don't have to always begin at one. Yeah. Um, we can take the lessons from the past and, and very directly employ them. Um, two, I think understanding that... Um, it is important to really listen and build empathy with other folks and apply that to the work that you are doing, right? It's not, it's not such an amazing or miraculous thing. It's not such a special thing to just work to improve your plight. Yeah. It's a truly heroic thing to work to help other folks. Definitely. And so that's a very important part of things. And I think you can also connect with institutions like ours. Like we have a membership program. Mm -hmm. um, you can, you know, sign up to get information um, um, via our website. You can sign up for a newsletter and such. So you can get information about what's going on in this country and the world. How can you literally lend your shoulder, right? Or lift mm -hmm a box, do some work um, in collaboration with other people. And if it's not the center, then I would still say, look for those opportunities in your own community. Sure. See who's doing important organizing and advocacy work and in big ways or small ways, get involved. Yeah. Even the smallest thing makes a difference. That could inspire somebody to do the same thing, so. Absolutely. This morning I had to run out um, on a quick errand and I was, um, I briefly spoke to a woman who was in line at a Starbucks and she really wanted her coffee. She needed her coffee and she was complaining about that and how long the, the barista was taking. And then um, I saw her walk out not that long after me and she got into the parking lot and a woman approached her who was clearly a woman experiencing homelessness and she looked down and she handed it all over. Mm. Um, you know, she gave her her coffee and her pastry. And maybe that seems like a very small thing, but I think that that, you know, is evidence of mm. living in the beloved community as well and recognizing with compassion somebody else's struggle. Yeah. There is always something that you can do. Especially after the experience you had in the coffee shop and to go through that and just to be selfless and here. Yeah. Puts things into perspective. So. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, thank you for your time again. I, I wish I had you as a professor in college because, you know, I really enjoyed this uh, conversation and, you know, I learned something today as well. Um, and through this program, Community Voices, we've just been supporting communities that come, you know, that look like you and I. And up to date, we've donated over $500,000 to like different organizations and charities. So, you know, we want to make another donation to the center in Lenny of $10,000 to help continue your work, your amazing work, and helping educate, you know, kids that are coming up or even, you know, adults who are just interested and want to help educate themselves. You're never too old to learn, right? 
Absolutely. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for your interest. This was a lot of fun. And mm -hmm. I take your compliment about wanting me for a professor as high praise. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been through a lot of professors. So I feel like we have more like yourself who are truly passionate about what they do and educated as well. You know, a lot of kids who come out of college feeling way smarter than they are. So. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for your interest and continue to come to the center and again, to visit us at National Center for Civil and, Civil and Human Rights, not National Center, civilandhumanrights.org. Cool. Yeah, I definitely will next time in Atlanta because last week it was like a quick, you know, in and out, but I went through it a little bit, but next time I'm definitely gonna really absorb and soak it in and really, you know, take it in. We have a lot to explore. You can come back again and again. Thank you, I will. I'll take you up on that. Okay. <laughs> Cool. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. You're very welcome.